Hi survivors! In the last episode, you learned how to efficiently gather the resources you need for survival. However, with limited backpack space, it's crucial to have a base where you can store your resources and loot and process them. In this episode, we will guide you through building a firm starter base, which is essential for rapid development early on in the game. Oh, and while you're here, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. Are you ready to go? Well, let's get started. After gathering a sufficient amount of resources, you can open the map to check some key resource points nearby. Finding an area abundant in resources will lay the foundation for later expansion and give you a competitive advantage in a battle. It will also save time and reduce boredom during the long running. Therefore, always make sure that there are enough trees, ores, nettles and food spawning around your base. In addition, we recommend you set your base up near a level 1 radiation zone or a trade zone. Level 1 radiation zones are marked in blue on the map. To protect yourself from radiation damage, you'll need to wear an anti-corruption mask, which can be quickly obtained by crafting, completing tasks or found in supply chests. Within the radiation zone, chests and box can be found. You can quickly build up a collection of essential items including materials, tools, weapons, gear and some ready to eat food. But don't worry, we'll cover resources gathering in radiation zones in more detail in the next episode. The trade zone can also be identified on the map. This area allows you to take a temporary break, shop at ease and not worry about being attacked by other players. The trade zone contains some vending machines where you can purchase vehicles, weapons, ammo, gear and other resources by using spares, coins or badges. Additionally, the trade zone provides other facilities such as an oil refiner for processing crude oil and a disassembler for breaking down items to obtain resources. Lastly, the road is another worthwhile consideration for collecting loot. The trash heaps alongside the road often contain oil drums of different colors and a few supply chests and toolboxes. Yellow and blue oil barrels give out spares, gear and other crafting materials. Red oil drums, on the other hand, are valuable sources of crude oil and inferior fuel, which are essential for driving vehicles and crafting furnaces. Basically, the road is a great place to acquire some spares and tools from the boxes without entering radiation zones. Once you have selected a proper area, the next step is to build an initial base. In the early stage of the battle, your resources are limited. Therefore, an initial base should be small, quick to build and expandable. This will provide you with a convenient space to store your resources and enough time to plan your subsequent main base without wasting any resources. For a quick and secure initial base, I recommend starting with a 2x2 square foundation. Then, as shown in the diagram, set up triangle bases around it, which will be used to create blast protection layers later. After that, we'll create a combination of half gables on the square foundation, followed by a half wall on top of it. This arrangement provides a slightly taller half wall combination than a complete large wall, allowing for double layered ceilings. One tip here is that we can place a sleeping bag between the first and second ceilings. It will prevent enemies from destroying our spawning points once they burst in. Next, complete the construction of blast protection layer walls. Finally, build two doors and place them respectively on the square and triangle base. This strategic door placement can stop raiders from easily rushing into your home when the doors are open by accident. And there you have it, a cost-effective and safe beginner base is completed. After finishing the base's structural construction, the next step is to set up a cabinet. The cabinet will create a restricted area around your space where other players are not able to build. In addition, by filling your cabinet with required materials, it can prevent your base from collapsing naturally. On the interface of your cabinet, you can check how long the resources inside can maintain your base. At the same time, it also functions as a large container to store your construction materials. Then, install code locks on both cabinet and doors to prevent other players from breaking in and raiding your items. You can also share the password with your friends, allowing them access to your resources and loot. But be careful when doing this. Not everyone is to be trusted in an apocalypse environment. Here's Johnny! Now, let's craft some wooden chests to efficiently store your loot. And while we're at it, 
Let's create a campfire to cook some food and restore our health. Some recipes can be checked on the interface of Cook. You can find some cooking recipes in the cooking interface for confirmation on the ingredients. Alternatively, feel free to experiment with your own recipes. However, be cautious of the arcane cuisines as a result of failures, as it can cause you to lose health and stamina. After that, set up a workbench in a suitable place. For crafting some weapons and tools, it will be required to operate close to the workbench. Besides, consuming spares at the workbench to do research and development will randomly unlock an item recipe. If you have specific item recipes in mind, you can spend spares through the R&D bench to unlock them step by step. To upgrade your base or craft weapons and ammo, you'll need a furnace to melt iron ores and obtain metal. You can acquire your first furnace by completing guide tasks or by crafting one with stone, wood and inferior fuel. A furnace requires 30 units of low quality fuel. It means you need 90 animal fat from hunting animals and 30 cloth from nettles. You can also destroy red oil drums alongside the road which might provide low quality fuel. Now is the time to upgrade your base. As you develop, your base can be transformed from a weak wooden structure to stronger stone, iron, steel and titanium. In build mode, you can choose specific sections of your base to upgrade. Or, you can accomplish all upgrades at once by using the cabinet. A tip is to prioritize upgrading your doors first, especially if your resources are limited, as they are the weakest part of your base. On your first day, upgrading your base to stone construction with iron doors will greatly enhance your potential in surviving. We hope you learned on how to construct a relatively safe base with essential facilities. Our next episode will focus on how to safely gather resources within strongholds and explain detailed content related to sentry rooms. If you think this video has been useful, please remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel to stay updated. And like last time, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. See you next time, survivors!